Meet Arnold, and today he's in Europe checking out this ancient temple. And it's pretty creepy in here. Hey, who turned off the light? Hmm. Arnold, you better not touch anything. What's going on? Mother of God, it looks like we're now in the 13th century, and we're here during the Holy Inquisition. Hey. What an awesome trip. The main mission of the Inquisition was fighting the heretics. Hey, what did Arnold even do? Ooh, I think I get it now. They mistook your phone for a weapon of black Ooh. magic. The Inquisition didn't get along so well with progress. When Giordano Bruno proved that the Earth revolves around the sun, it completely contradicted Catholic ideas. Arnold, you're out of luck. In those days, all redheads were suspected of having ties with the devil. Relax. At first, they'll just question you. Take a seat and calm down. The chairs here are made of iron, specifically so that they can be heated. Confessions were usually obtained through torture. You need to give up heresy, Arnold. During the time of the Inquisition, a lot of heathen rituals were mistaken for black magic. They tried to convert heathens to Catholicism. Come on, Arnold, embrace Catholicism and you'll be free. It's true the Inquisition sometimes let those truly repentant go free. Holy baloney, what now? It looks like someone reported you. People often accused others of heresy in order to get rid of them. I don't know if you can endure any more of these tortures, Arnold. Meet the Spanish boot, the heretic's fork, and the Judas cradle. Arnold, I heavily advise you to confess about everything. Okay, by signing this, you agree that you're a necromancer, a magician, and a gnome. The positive thing is that the tortures are over, and the Inquisition, in fact, did not execute people. After confessing, the offender was sentenced in a state court. Calm down, Arnie. No one will burn you. According to the law, they'll just chop your head off. Wow, it looks like everyone is scared of your ability to release flames from your hands. It seems to be powerful magic. Oh dear, that's not the bright future people are thinking about. Indeed, by 2050, the Earth is suffering from global warming. The planet's population has grown to over 10 billion people. This overpopulation has caused a shortage of fresh water. Can you imagine? The planet is on the brink of destruction and they're fighting over Pepsi. All right, back to our mission. In 2050, everyone has cybernetic implants. And since enemy drones can detect implants at a distance of 10 kilometers, you, Arnold, are the most undetectable and invulnerable person in 2050. You are the one who will help change the course of the war. Soldiers assemble. And so, Arnold, the enemy has been spotted in the north, but the way is blocked by electromagnetic guns. Instead of projectiles, they fire electrical impulses, and the impulse speed exceeds 7,000 kilometers an hour. We have to find shelter. Quick, go down into the subway. You escape the guns, Arnold, but there are other problems now. Drones detected by scanners. And don't worry, Arnold, remember, these drones won't even notice you. You just need to rush past them and turn off the power. Well done, Arnold. The future sure wasn't ready for the likes of you. Keep going, buddy. You're almost there. It's time to get to the surface. Arnold, there are a lot of enemies around. Get into the exosuit. With it, you can become a super soldier and travel long distances without getting tired. And all physical activity becomes 20 times easier than it was before. You're unstoppable now, Arnold. Now you just need to figure out the controls. Huh? Arnold, no! You just killed yourself from the future. Okay, well, no time to grieve. Your enemies are coming. You have a flamethrower. Use it! 
Oh yeah, no one ever thought that one day this would happen in Hollywood. Arnold, look out, a rocket! One fine day, which didn't portend disaster at all, Arnold got locked up in a hypermarket until the end of his days. You may ask why, and the answer is just because. I simply wanted to lock him up in a hypermarket. Here you can eat sweets and candy bars all day long, and you can drive around the store in a cart. At your disposal are goods for recreation, sports, clothes, and even medicines. On average, there are 120,000 different products in a hypermarket that will provide you with 50 years of a carefree life. But unfortunately, without electricity, a large part of these goods are going to spoil the very next day. At room temperature, the entire ton of milk that's in the store will be gone in just 18 hours. Fresh chicken, pork, and beef will all go bad within a day. Cakes and pastries will last a little longer, maybe 36 hours. If you're lucky, you could try to prepare. You could salt the fish and dry the bread. Then their shelf lives will be extended by years. But hey, seize the day, right Arnold? After a week, vegetables and fruits will also go bad and you'll have to switch to cereals. But even just their preparation will deplete the limited supply of water you can drink by at least 10 years. You could try to extend that by filtering it through coal from the gardening department and then cleaning it with silver. Okay, so from now on, your usual meal is going to be canned food. Beef stew can last almost indefinitely if the packaging isn't damaged. And pickled cucumbers and tomatoes can be an additional source of water. So, the three tons of canned food that are in the store will last you for eight years. And then the last remaining source of food will be... Many things can be used for other purposes. For example, you can wipe your bum with just about any kind of paper. You just need to crumple it up thoroughly and, well, use it. Just like our great-great-grannies did. And when you run out of cash, you can always use the card. Welcome to the year 2100. This girl has contact lenses that connect to the internet. She can look up any information about you in just a few seconds. Here you will die as a virgin. Get inside. This space elevator will lift you up to an altitude of 35,000 kilometers above sea level, straight to a huge ring that turns the energy of the Earth's rotation into electricity. To your right is a human body part shop. Let's go inside and look for a replacement for your unfortunate finger. This doctor can recreate an entire organism from only the genome. So all the zoos here are teeming with dinosaurs, dodo birds, and even Neanderthals. You want a snack? 3D printers print food from artificial animal cells, synthesize flour and minerals, and it tastes better than food from 2019. What a wonderful world, right? But it all could turn out quite different. Nuclear war, global warming, pandemics. This could also be our future. Science is a double-edged sword. We can use it for good, or we could all die from it. Been stuck in a traffic jam for three hours because of road repairs. Poor Arnold's already rifled through the glove box, found last year's french fries, and is listening for the hundredth time to a Ricky Martin CD that's stuck in the stereo. I agree. It's appalling. Don't do it, Arnold. You won't save any time, and it's really dangerous. Say thank you, Arnie. I'm the one who saved your butt by stopping time, just like they do in cartoons. What would you do first in such a situation? Maybe go look in the Pentagon archives and find out if Armstrong really did go to the moon. Or maybe you dare to kiss Susie. Ooh. The main thing is not to end up in Japan. They love stopping time. I mean, they just really, really love it. In terms of physics, if time stops, then everything stops. You don't have to be a mathematician to understand that time is one of the components of speed and distance. If one of these values is zero, then all the others will be zero as well. Now, onward to adventure. Oops. 
Light particles and photons have also stopped. Accordingly, the ability to distinguish anything with your eyesight has disappeared. And you won't be able to drink any water. Everything is frozen. Here's another interesting fact. A stream of light which left Earth 65 million years ago is now 65 million light years away. And someone with a large enough telescope pointed right at the Earth can now see the dinosaurs. But I suggest we return to reality, Arnold. Now you won't feel like you're wasting time because every second of our lives is beautiful. <gasps> Mother of God, it's a dang dinosaur! Oh, Arnold, you scared me! I see you decided to visit the Paleo History Museum. It's really cool here. Even Orochimaru from Naruto is here. I heard he knows secrets of resurrection. He can bring dead things back to life. What the heck? No. He's using it on the dinosaurs! Run, you dang fool! Dinosaurs are very dangerous, whether it's herbivores, carnivores, or even those radical dinosaurs. They're insanely angry, and you would be too if you hadn't eaten in 66 million years. Furthermore, the dinosaurs are getting even angrier now that they see what happened to their descendants over the course of evolution. All the world's leaders have declared martial law. Alas, very little is really known about the true behavior of dinosaurs. It seems the best solution they've come up with is to hire a rabid turkey specialist. Yee! Attack! Dinosaurs reigned on Earth for 160 million years. But the fall of a meteorite changed the course of evolution and allowed for the development of our ancestors' mammals. Now, only the strongest will survive. But what in tarnation's going on now? Wait. I think I get it. Over the last 66 million years, the Earth's climate has gotten colder, and the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has changed. It looks like dinosaurs can't live here anymore, and are gonna die out once again. Hmm, what to do? In theory, we could build a Jurassic Park. We'll feed them and artificially maintain the climate. This place could be the most profitable tourist spot in the world. And we'll also be a global supplier of eggs and manure. Dino poop. But then again, an ordinary dinosaur eats a ton of grass a day, or more than 100 kilograms of meat. More than likely, the dinosaurs will eat all the fauna in the park and then probably start eating each other until they die out again. No matter how you slice it, the dinosaurs just aren't going to be able to live in our time. Do you really want to save them, Arnie? The only option is to send the dinosaurs back to the past, to their perfect world. Time to say goodbye, Arnie. At least there, you know they're going to be better off. Another evening session of degradation watching TV. So what do we have here? Elon Musk has launched a new rocket into space. And space has launched a meteor back at Elon Musk. Arnold, relax. You don't even know what a meteor is. A meteor is a large celestial body of cosmic origin. Their mass ranges from a few grams to thousands of tons. And don't be scared. There's only one case of a meteor strike hitting a person in history in 1954. And even then, it just hit somebody in their leg. It seems like somebody's volunteering to save the planet. And he's just bursting with enthusiasm. It looks like this episode will be the shortest ever. And have a happy end. Ah, uh, no, never mind. Same old, same old. Seems like our planet is about to be destroyed. Or maybe there's another savior. Could it be Arnold? Excellent. We'll pick an outfit for you. So this one is a no. Definitely not this one. Yee! No, not that one. Now this one. This is what you need. Although we could just copy what Project Dart from SpaceX did. 
It's planned that in 2022, a spacecraft weighing 500 kilograms will ram into an asteroid named Didymos at a speed of 6 kilometers per second. The autopilot hasn't been installed yet, so you're going to have to fly manually and become a hero. Oh, wow, Arnold, you survived. Pretty much like all the other lowest forms of life, like microbes. But now there is a small issue with water. After a meteor 100 kilometers in diameter hit the Earth, the shockwave destroyed almost all life within a radius of 100,000 square kilometers. There was a huge release of sulfur, and dust and ash from all the destruction rose into the upper atmosphere and blocked access from the sun's mm. rays. You must be hungry. It's good that you kept your space food in the rocket. There wasn't any food. That's terrible, because there's no food left on Earth. It's good that you're in a spacesuit, since it's minus 50 degrees outside, and you don't want to walk here for very long. Watch out! I forgot to add that cockroaches have also survived, and they've mutated just a wee little bit. You better run to infinity and beyond! Arnold, how in blazes did you get yourself into such a state? Arnold, congratulations! You're now at the center of the most colossal war on a scale larger than all the wars of humanity combined. Ten quadrillion ants participate in it. Have you ever even seen such a number? And what numbers have you seen? Oh. Look over there. The ants are preparing for battle. If ants became human-sized, then humanity wouldn't stand a chance. After all, even an ordinary ant would be able to lift a 16-story building and run with it on its back at a speed of 55 kilometers an hour. And here come the guests. Um, run maybe, Arnold? Oh, Arnold, coordination in space has never been your forte. Although, look, you made them run in a circle and pointed the leader at his own pheromone trail. If this happens to ants, they fall into a death trap. You created an ant swirl. The leader will now hit his troops in a circle until they all die from exhaustion. You're a hero for these guys, Arnold. They want to introduce you to the ant queen. But what is this? Oh, you've got to fight for power. Sometimes a second queen may appear in the anthill. As a result of that, the two queens hold a duel between themselves, deciding who will get to rule the anthill. After the fight, the ants determine which queen they like the best. True democracy. And then the majority destroys the minority. I take my words about democracy back. Watch out! Arnold, you're truly lucky. You managed to survive even a coup d'etat. But what is this? You're saturated with the smell of corpses, and now the ants all see you as dead. Therefore, they're going to bury you alive. Arnold was a useless schmuck. May he rest in peace. Sorry, Arnold, I'm not a big fan of such gory scenarios. So let's take a look at some interesting information. Let's wish Arnold's new friends a big bon appetit. Now, we should probably get to know them a little better. So, werewolves are called lycanthropes. That's the name they got from ancient Greece. The author of the term is Herodotus, a historian from 2,500 years ago, who, when describing Scythia, mentioned people who could instantly turn into wolves. As for vampires, the word vampire first appeared in the Oxford English Dictionary back in 1734. <gasps> Arnold, you're alive! I'm so happy! But wait, what's that on your neck? No, you gotta be kidding me! You're actually the first person ever to get bitten by both a vampire and a werewolf at the same time. I'm already wondering just what the heck you're gonna look like. Well, you try to figure out how that's gonna work. I'll tell you an interesting fact. In 1999, 907 Americans took out insurance policies on themselves in case they suddenly turned into werewolves during a full moon. Arnold, 
Looking like that, uh. Yuffie discovered a little too quickly. You need to choose a less obvious form. Moreover, back in medieval times, redheads were considered vampires. Ooh, Frankie has already added you to his friend list. That's sweet. He's also assembled from a bunch of random crap, just like you. Everyone knows about the ancient animosity that exists between vampires and werewolves, but I would have never guessed that I'd see such a thing in a single body. Oh, so you're getting hungry now. And you need food for two. Go, search for your victim. The Yay. perfect victim. Bon appetit, Arnie. Wait, Arnold, where are you? What did you expect? You can't go against the call of the wild. Just remember to clean up after your dog. Way to be a bloodsucker. With your moves, Arnold, you need to start thinking about going vegan. Ooh, I forgot to warn you. A double creature gets a double hunt. You need to put aside your differences, because you've got common enemies now. Prayer ain't gonna help you, buddy. And of course, garlic is deadly to you now, you moron. You're not the first victim of the hunt. In the 16th century, the French parliament passed a law to exterminate all shapeshifters. As a result, from 1520 to 1630, more than 30,000 people were killed in France who were thought to be werewolves. Lucky you, Arnold. The guys from Greenpeace are always on the lookout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. It looks like Elon Musk wants to find out if we can develop telepathic abilities in a human being. Don't worry, Arnold. They'll let you go if you answer correctly. So, guess what's in the picture? Wrong! And on this one. No! Get it together, man! Such experiments were carried out in the 1950s in the USA. Their goal was to develop paranormal abilities in soldiers in order to gain an advantage in the Cold War. The test subjects were given LSD, since LSD significantly increases the activity of neural connections. Arnold, you pull yourself together already. Even a rat learns faster than that. Well, true, this ain't no ordinary rat. He has a chip in his brain. Scientists proved the possibility of transmitting nerve impulses from a distance back in 2013. The rats were in different cities, but they acted together, thanks to electrodes implanted in their brains and the internet. It looks like Elon Musk is going to try all the different ways to develop telepathy on you at the same time. Arnold, stop! You haven't mastered your new skills yet, buddy. Mind reading has many benefits. Now, people can't hide anything from you. But I have to warn you, you won't like everything they think about. The pros in a relationship, you can immediately know if your partner really loves you or not. You can understand the language of animals, and you can find your perfect match. But what if all people could read each other's minds? An ideal world without lies or falsehood. Or maybe not. Hey, mister, don't be offended if he thought your nose is too pimply. Gosh darn it, this is a disaster. No, Arnie, stop. Don't even think about it. Ooh, looks like you flew right into the Bermuda Triangle. According to rumors, planes and ships often disappear here. Arnold, where did your jet wings and clothes go? Seems like the rumors are true and you're about to disappear. Science doesn't recognize the strange things taking place in the Bermuda Triangle. However, there are several non-scientific theories. According to one of them, everything that disappears here ends up in a parallel universe. Look, everything's a little different here. You look strange even to this dog. As you can see, your house has also changed a lot. I advise you to be careful there. Meet Arnold. This is Arnold, although from a parallel universe. 
he's much more successful than you and even sports a stylish mustache. And it looks like he doesn't like you at all. At the bottom of the Bermuda Triangle is the mythical city of Atlantis. Don't ask, because I have no idea why the ancient Atlanteans needed all these planes and ships. But ancient customs and traditions are harsh. Someone like you will be immediately turned into a slave. Or if you can't handle it, you'll be turned into fuel for steamboats. Careful, Arnold, new vehicles are arriving. There is another theory. Everything that happens in the Bermuda Triangle is due to aliens. And perhaps they're taking vehicles to study human technology or putting it in a museum. Just look at how much stuff they have in their exhibits. Since aliens are poorly versed in terrestrial life forms, you were placed with mushrooms. Don't be offended, Arnold. It could be because of your haircut. You won't be bored for long. They say aliens abduct people for a different purpose. You must get pregnant and carry their alien baby. Sorry, Arnold, but aliens are also bad at gender. Good morning, Arnold. What are your plans for today? Hmm, maybe the plan for today is try not to die. Are you scared, Arnold? But what if this is all made up? What if I told you neither King Kong nor Godzilla could survive on Earth? It's pretty simple. Look, the largest man in the world ever was Robert Pershing Wadlow. His height was 2 meters 72 centimeters, and he lived for just 22 years. He suffered from a disease called gigantism. With this disease, the brain releases excessive amounts of growth hormone. There Therefore, in the process of human evolution, the norms for height and weight were established, and any large deviations are considered disease. One of the biggest stresses is to the heart, which has to circulate 15 liters of blood instead of just the normal five. And the heart often can't withstand such strenuous dynamics for too long. But what about the fact that there are other giant creatures on Earth, like whales? Well, everything can be easily explained. The density of water is higher than the density of air and is almost equal to a human's density. That's why we can float on the surface of salt water. This means that the habitat itself supports the weight of living things. For example, whales, whose ancestors 50 million years ago looked a lot like a dog with hooves. Godzilla and King Kong could not exist on Earth at all because of our friend gravity. But let's say we turn off gravity to scientifically allow for the existence of Godzilla and King Kong. Everything on Earth that isn't fixed to the ground would take off into space. Let's start with wormholes. Where have you been dreaming of going? To Australia? No problem, get in. A wormhole is a tunnel through the space-time continuum that theoretically could send you to any point in the universe in just a few seconds. But time is relative, Arnie, and it might take just a few seconds for you, but on Earth, decades could pass. Congratulations, Arnie. You're in Australia in the year 2050. It's a little uncomfortable, yeah? And what if you needed to move around at the same time? Quantum teleportation can help in this matter. Your body consists of a hundred trillion cells, which in turn consists of a hundred trillion atoms each. And each atom contains tiny pinpoint particles, quanta, which could help you teleport over huge distances. It would be great to find someone who could help you build a quantum teleporter. Well, look who's here, Rick and Morty. Arnie, take their drawings. With their help, you could create a device for instantaneous movement anywhere in the universe and even into alternate universes. Now, when the teleporter's ready, climb into the box and make sure there's no one else inside. Well, so long, Arnold. In quantum teleportation, the original body dies and a duplicate is created at the destination point. No big loss in your case. Wow! I told you, during teleport, you need to be alone inside the booth. Don't touch anything in the laboratory. What have you done?
Your DNA, which was hybridized with that of a scorpion, was transmitted through the satellite system and turned all the inhabitants of the planet into human-scorpion hybrids. You've destroyed Dimension C-137, you stupid idiot, Arnie. Rick and Morty would have traveled back to the original universe, where the mutants don't exist, but you can only do it a couple of times. I don't think we want to see what happens to Arnie in this universe. Better we go back to Australia. Fortunately, I saved Arnold's quantum data, and therefore have the ability to recover his useless body. Arnie, you should crawl through the wormhole in the direction of your home in 2018. And don't forget the blueprints of your body. It seems now we know how humanity will create a teleporter in 2050.